Hey guys, Lex here, back for some more of the Great Ace Attorney. Last time, we played as Mikotoba and Sholmes. That was cool. And we found Shishiro. So yeah, let's start. I'm guessing we're gonna do an investigation since the trial starts in the morning. But yeah. The unexpected halt of proceedings sent a clamor around the courtroom. But outside the Bailey, where Londoners knew nothing of the secret trial within, it was a typical still night. Then, at a little past eight o'clock that evening, Mr. Sholmes and his partner returned to the Baker Street. Oh, so it's night? We're gonna do a nighttime investigation? 3rd of November, 8.07 p.m. Sholmes is sweet. You have returned, my dear fellows. Welcome back to Britain, and thank you for your timely help. I think nothing of it. I believe you've had an even more wearing day than Mikotoba and I, no? You could say that. We were on the brink of defeat in court earlier. So this prosecutor, Asoki, had you on the ropes today. And he's your best friend, you say? Well, he's not really the man I knew in Japan anymore. Kazuma's changed. Oh, Mr. Narahodo. His hair. I mean, it's incredible. I think that he'd even entertain the idea of acting as the Reaper's assassin. Well, nevertheless, you must introduce me. After all, I've only ever met the young man as a corpse. Hehe, <laughs> guard her up. When all this started almost a year ago now. Mr. Shum still hasn't told us the truth about what really happened back then. But the motivation for what he himself described as a great detective's lie. Now then, I must say, it's really quite a journey all the way to France. Well, it is another country, Mr. Sholmes. So, what news of Judge Chicago? We took him to Scotland Yard. The investigating detectives there have a lot of questions for the man. Poor Professor Mikotoba. This must be quite a shock for him. Ah, yes. I picked this up at the telegraph office on the way home. What is it? Surely you haven't forgotten already. I put upon you for the master only yesterday. You put upon me, Sholmes. I had to fill out your telegram to Japan and foot the bill as well. Oh, you had a reply already? What was so urgent though, Mr. Sholmes? Such matters can wait until later. I'm far too hungry for an involved conversation at present. Well, that's good news, because supper is ready, everyone. Ah, and what a feast it is. If I were none the wiser, I'd think the trial were won already. Roast beef, kippers, stew, steak, and kidney pie. Yorkshire pudding. Tomorrow could be a very long day, so eat up. In that case, I think I'll seat myself just here. This place appears to be the only one set with the helping of pheasant as well. Oh, sir, hey, up there. Why have not? Are we in set places this evening? Yes, and that place is for Susie's daddy. For me? That's right. I made it especially for you, Professor Mickey. <laughs> I see. Well, that's terribly kind of you. Mm, it's... It's a shame, really. What do you mean? For a brief moment, I believed it. That Susie and I were half sisters, I mean. Oh. Oh. Uh. Mm hmm? Iris, do. Do you mean. Yes, I know now. I overheard yesterday. Certainly listened to the conversation you had after I tricked you all into thinking I'd left. I don't remember what the kind of thought. <laughs> uh, misunderstanding arose because of that autopsy report from ten years ago. But actually, it turned out that neither Dr. Wilson nor Professor McAdoo are Iris's father. Yes, about that, Iris. You know, I... I know. You can't tell me at the moment. 
Oh, Iris. Oh. But this is by way of an apology. Sorry for eavesdropping. Oh. Oh no, that's quite alright. Then why didn't I get any apologetic pheasant? <laughs> so, just who is Iris's father? I suppose that's not something we'll be finding out today. It's Van Zeeks. No, it's Strongheart. So then, let's us dine, while our largely pheasantless plates are still piping hot. A fine idea, Sholmes. It all looks absolutely delicious. Eat as much as you like. There are always seconds. This could be our last chance to ask questions before tomorrow's trial about that telegram from Japan and about Kazuma. I can't let this opportunity slip away. So I'm gonna examine everything. <laughs> if I can do it. No, oh, yeah, okay. Examine everything. Oh. I could Oh man, I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna do the <laughs> straight away. <laughs> I did that every single time. <laughs> uh. Nothing new. Wow. Game really is about to end. Or they just didn't feel like writing more lines. <laughs> um, Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing? Sitting. Truly, it's abundantly clear. I wasn't brooding over Makotobus of refusal to share his pheasant with me. Nevertheless, I felt the need to withdraw from the social circle for a while and look on with hungry eyes. Huh. Sorry, Hurley, but I cut that pheasant especially for Susie's daddy. Even though I played the role of father to you for far longer. Um, Mr. Sholmes, could I discuss some things with you? Who's her dad? <laughs> Answer all our questions. Certainly, my dear fellow. I find myself quite in the mood for a spell of conversation. No doubt. You're hungry to learn more of my deep love of game. I can probably contain my curiosity on that one. Hmm. You needn't look at me in that fashion. In what fashion? Japanese fashion? It seems that before we discuss the pheasant, we have rather unpheasant matters to discuss. <laughs> Let's examine everything! I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> okay, converse. The telegram from Japan. So, what was that telegram you received back from Japan then? Ah, uh, this... I think my lucky stars, it arrived in time. Record found as indicated. Duplicate follows. K. Asogi. A. Shin. T. Gregson. J. Wilson. What? Those four names? We've come across that exact same list before. They came up in that unforgettable case last spring. Rip. What appeared to be a simple case of aggravated murder turned out to be masking monumental intrigue. A plot that involved the sale of British governmental secrets to foreign states. In exposing the means by which those secrets were being leaked, we deciphered a fragment of a message. Am I saying this out loud? K. Asoki, A. Shin, T. Guregusen, J. Wilson. But we didn't find the names out until the case was over, and we never did get to the bottom of what they meant. All we knew was that the information had been sent by somebody in the British government to somebody in Japan. So, why are the names coming up again now? Yes, where did the sender of your telegram discover them, Mr. Sholmes? I have here the message I had arrived yesterday. Allow me to read it to you. I can't read it. Enter Judge Jokoku's office undetected and investigate telegram records. Expect to find communication from Britain dated one year ago. List of four names. Need by tomorrow. Naruhodo. <laughs> I sent it to a detective I know who specializes in clandestine missions of this nature. 
you ask Inspector Hosunaga to undertake such an onerous task for you? <laughs> my bad picture. <laughs> and in my name? <laughs> I wonder what guys he outed for this time. <laughs> Is this more in the beach? <laughs> my dear fellows, it was a matter of great urgency. You understand? Anyway, the list of names was found in Sishiro's office, as Shroms predicted. So you mean that mysterious collection of names that was sent from Britain to Japan was... It was sent to Judge Jakonku. It was the intended recipient. I don't believe it. But that doesn't answer the question of what the list of names actually signifies. Hmm. I did formulate a hypothesis about that. But without a shred of evidence, I couldn't possibly have shared it. Mr. Sholmes looks deadly serious for once. Telegram from Japan. I wanna read that. That's it? No, oh, man. I can't believe I thought that was a bomb. <laughs> That tragedy we had to go through on this SS Burya guard rope it was all for nothing. Kazuma wasn't dead at all. You were completely taken in by the lie you told us. Your great detectives lie. Then what happened to uh, Pavlova? <laughs> Is she in jail? I took no pleasure in deceiving you. Oliver, at the time. All that concern me was preventing the young man's study tour from taking place, whatever the cost. What? I capitalized on the events that transpired to see that he was sent back to Japan. This remains, you mean? Precisely, Mrs. Ato. And then, I made sure that somebody else was sent to Britain instead. Oh my, you mean? The arrangement between our two countries was already in place. One university student lawyer and one judicial assistant to be accommodated on the study tour. In other words, by arranging for someone else to fill the place originally intended for Mr. Sogi, I would successfully prevent the man from arriving on our shores for several years at least. Wait, do, do you mean to say that it was all in the aid of stopping Kazuma coming to Britain? That's why you... Get back, Mr. Naruto. Was there not somebody who quite casually urged you to continue on your voyage to England? No. The terms of the study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Great Britain and Japan. In the light of Mr. Sogi's unfortunate death, I'm afraid the study tour can no longer go ahead. Oh. My dear fellows, the majority of problems have an extremely simple solution, you know. All you require is one lawyer, and the study tour can continue, surely. But there is no one else with the necessary qualifications, Mr. Sholmes. I know of no other lawyer. The voyage to London still promises a good month of time. Ample opportunity, I would say, to find yourselves another suitable lawyer. Ooh. So, you manipulated me. I've often remarked on the extraordinary lengths to which friendship will drive a man. I was quite sure that you would rise to the challenge for your late friend. I don't believe it! But if that was all contrived... I mean, what happened was treated by the authorities as murder. A woman was mistakenly arrested as the perpetrator. We supposed to become of her. That's what I was talking about! Naturally, I didn't allow the misapprehensions to have any serious repercussions. I subsequently explained everything and assisted the unfortunate soul in finding the foreign refuge she sought. Oh, she's even American now. I seemed to remember that Mrs. Sato and I had some rather strong words for her. Well, she was certainly not devoid of all guilt. She deserved every word, I'm sure. I wonder if she made it to America then. No, she went back to Russia. Hmm. I'm afraid I simply can't comprehend it. 
Why would you go to such lengths, Mr. Sholmes? Why were you so determined to stop Kazuma-sama from reaching Britain? Hmm. The truth is, 12 months ago, it was already a very tangible omen of the impending tragedy, you see. Oh. An omen that, at this very moment in time, is close at hand. Oh. An omen of all these tragic events that already existed a year ago is close at hand. I need to find out exactly what Mr. Sholmes knows. Uh. What? the omen. Oh, uh, do I have to present something? Let's try this telegram. There is no room for doubt with your instructions in this telegram, Mr. Sholmes. We were very clear that Judge Goku's office that would be searched. So, you obviously knew that's where the list of names would be found. K. Asoki, A. Shin, T. Gregson, J. Wilson. But we only learnt of those four names just over six months ago now. And only because they appeared as part of the top secret government communications that were leaked. That's true, yes. But at the time, you were unaware of the background. See, those four names were wired to Japan. Around six months before that, approximately this time last year, in fact. And you were both still in Japan. Huh? It really would be hypocrisy on my part to reprove the others for intercepting state secrets. Because after all, I'm perpetually eavesdropping on communications between the British and Japanese governments. You're perpetually doing what? How? Never mind the details, but you should know. Your secret is safe from Herlock Sholmes when he has designs on knowing it. Oh my, Mr. Sholmes. A fabulous line. Now, one month after the list of four names was wired to the recipient Chikoku in Japan. Dr. John H. Wilson was murdered. Huh? As soon as I learned of the incident, the hypothesis rapidly took shape in my mind. As it turned out, I was partly correct and partly mistaken. Oh! Wait. What's the name? What was the order of the names? Oh! K. Asogi. Wait. No. I thought it would be. So Gregson is supposed to kill J. Wilson? Asian supposed to kill us, so that doesn't make sense. Never mind. I thought it was who was supposed to kill who. <laughs> Nevertheless, it was the beginning of all the tragic events that were to follow. Mr. Sholmes, please tell us all you know. Tell us about those four names and the tragedy to which they are all somehow connected. Hmm. Yeah. As I said. When I learned of Dr. Wilson's murder in Japan, my mind immediately returned to those four names. Because you see, there was someone else on the list who I believed to be recently deceased. What? Who? Hey Shin, as it was transcribed in Japanese script, in actual fact, Miss Asashi. That was a familiar name to me. She was a professional killer, well known among London's unsavory classes. Oh, I see, because she's an assassin. <laughs> but she had completely vanished from existence several months before Wilson's murder. It was 
so I came to the logical conclusion that she herself had been killed. And accordingly, I became fearful for the lives of the remaining two persons on the list. Ah, Kayasoki and Tigrixen. Owing to our proximity, I decided to take measures to protect Grixen and myself. But I determined it would be safest if young Asogi were to stay away from Britain. Ah, so that's why he went to such lengths to prevent his study tour from going ahead. Exactly. So, you already knew who Kazuma Salva was, Mr. Shows? Oh, yes. Jones and I have exchanged correspondence for years. I'd recounted many tales about Asogi to him in my letters. The news of Dr. Wilson's death, of course. Oh, so Dr. Wilson is dead then? I didn't know. <laughs> we did. Oh, Iris, you're here. I knew it wasn't my daddy, but still, that's very sad. Sorry, Iris. We knew the significance of the name, obviously, but... We just couldn't bring ourselves to tell you. No. But what you just told us, Mr. Sholmes, doesn't completely tie in with the facts. There's one big hole in your hypothesis. Big hole, Mr. Naruto? Oh, uh, is she still alive? Ah, yes, you mean about Asa Shin, I presume. Oh, of course. Exactly. She wasn't killed, was she? She was in Japan posing as a visiting student under the assumed name of Giselle Brett. I'm glad you're keeping up, my dear fellow. But I only became aware of that fact. Two days ago, the foyer of the Great Waterloo Hotel. What? Ah! Upon hearing the startling revelation, the hypothesis that had formed surrounding those four names was completely turned topsy. What? Topsy? Topsy. What do you mean when you say your hypothesis was turned topsy, Mr. Sholmes? I had believed all four names on this list to be names of victims. However, I was mistaken. Wait, let me check the court record. Ah, I went the wrong way. <laughs> let me check this. Yeah, Keisogi. Hmm. However, I was mistaken. Very much so. Asashin is a killer. So this telegram is a list of both victims and killers, is it? Indeed. And it would seem that Miss Shin was dispatched from Britain with the sole intention of dispatching Dr. Wilson. Her visiting student being merely a front. Ah. Oh. We tried to of course explain why no motive could be determined for her actions. But the real reason Dr. Wilson was killed by Asa Shin is because he was the target of an assassination. Before armed with that knowledge, fresh consideration of this telegram puts the list in a very different perspective. What do you mean? Well, does it not strike you? There's another among the four who subsequently became a visiting student. Oh, wait, you mean... But of course, and let me know only too well. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, Asogi is supposed to kill Crixen? <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> but of course, a name you only know too well. You, you mean, Kasuma? Oh. He did say in court earlier today. Yes, on the 31st of October, I accompanied Inspector Crixon to Dunkirk in order to carry out a mission. Oh, and the mission was assassination of the Mark. Young Mr. Asogi accepted that mission a year ago now. Surely not. In conclusion, this document is a contract of sorts. An international agreement, one might say, detailing an assassin exchange 
assassin exchange. How could Kazuma possibly have got involved in something like that? Oh man, this is cool. Let's assume that we have two parties, each wishing to dispose of a distinct individual. Those two parties then make a contract to swap their respective assassination targets. That would be an assassin exchange. So to begin with, the British assassin is dispatched as a visiting student in Japan, where she kills her target. And then the Japanese assassin is dispatched as a visiting student to Britain, in order to eliminate his target. Oh, it truly does sound like an exchange. But, what on earth is the point? Don't forget, Naruhodo. Let the British assassin at least escape conviction. Ah, oh, thanks to the diplomatic immunity afforded by consular jurisdiction. Oh, yes. Such jurisdiction should be null and void under the terms of the new treaty between our two countries. So the fact that it was brought into play suggests intervention at the very highest levels. The highest levels. These murders were two sides of the same coin, linked not by a common motive, but a contractual agreement. As such, they appeared utterly unrelated, yet in truth, the assassins were complicit in one singular, devilish scheme. That disassociation and the safeguard of diplomatic immunity were, I believe, the motivation behind this plot. But wait a minute, Sholmes. If this telegram really is describing the exchange of assassin as you're suggesting, it would mean that the Japanese killer's target was never Shishiro Jekogu at all. It would mean Asogi's target was actually Inspector Gregson. What? Asuma was here for Gregson? So Jekogu wasn't actually the mark? Yes, that's exactly what it would mean. Hmm. I hold myself personally responsible for failing to keep the inspector safe. Mr. Sholmes. I told him of my fears and implored him to seek transfer to an overseas position. Obviously, with a young pickpocket in tow. Yes, Gina. Come to think of it, Inspector Gregson did mention that to us at the Great Exhibition. Yeah, so he's not the assassin, because he would be killing Gina. <laughs> that he'd be transferring to the Paris police and taking Gina with him. But without informing me, he engaged in one last assignment, it seems. And sadly, it turned out to be his very last. There's too much to take in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> all right, everyone, that's quite enough of all that serious talk for one day. Isn't it, Hurley? I mean, look at its time! Ah, oh, quite right, Iris. We must conclude our preparations for tomorrow. What preparations? Well, I think I shall make my way back to the hotel room now. This has certainly been a night to remember. It is? It is a little bit sad, though. Hmm? I mean, I like the idea of being my daddy. Because then, Susie would be even... <laughs> Because then Susie would have been my big sister. I'm sorry, Iris. Oh. I know, Iris. I was thinking quite the same thing. Were you? But if somebody like me would be worthy, I would be delighted to become your sister. What? Really? Oh, yes. Without question. Oh, you'll teach me all the ways you know to throw Bruno to the floor? Yes, yes, of course. It would be my pleasure. You didn't have to read quite so readily. Oh, but wait a minute. If Susie's going to be my big sister, he could be my big brother if you want, Bruno. Huh. I, I mean, yes, of course. If you'll have me, I'll gladly be your brother. Well done, Iris. We must always be mindful of feelings. I've raised you so well. Because <laughs> being sensitive is your strong suit, naturally.
I, I'm going to work extra hard for tomorrow night. Because it's for my big brother and sister. Um, what is all this talk about preparing for tomorrow? Preparing for what? The trial? <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see. Oh. Good luck in court tomorrow. I'm expecting a sterling performance. I'll do my very best, of course. Uh, what do we do now? Is this chapter over? <laughs> so, the overnight break in the trial's proceedings became a crucial turning point. Exposing new truths while posing new conundrums. That list of four names on the telegram in Judge Chicago's office. An extraordinary assassination plot in which my best friend had somehow become involved. I felt as though I'd been plunged into an even greater darkness all of a sudden. But at the same time, I felt sure I would see the light again soon. Because I was lucky enough to have the most wonderful family in the world standing steadfastly behind me. Oh man, that was really short. <laughs> okay, awesome. That was just one part. Alright guys, thanks for watching. See ya, bye. Thank <laughs> you.